Chenonceau is the most visited chateau of the Loire Valley, and it's the only one built across a river. This former royal palace gets over a million annual visitors, making this one of the most popular attractions in the Loire Valley. The building has been classified as a historic monument ever since 1840 by the French Ministry of Culture, and it's part of the UNESCO Loire Valley World Heritage Site. You do pay a normal admission fee to go inside, but the extensive gardens all around it are free. And so is the view of the chateau from the outside, which is actually the most enjoyable part of the visit anyway. Chenonceau is most famous for its setting across the river. It's as if the building formed a sort of island or ship moored in the rapidly running Cher River, which joins with the Loire River a few miles away. The current chateau was built in 1514 to 1522 on the site of two earlier palaces, but it took another 60 years to expand and complete the chateau wing on the bridge across the river, all built with an architectural mixture of the late Gothic and early Renaissance. However, during those many years of development, the chateau changed ownership in a very complicated series of royal events that seem like an exaggerated historical movie involving a bitter competition between a king's wife and his mistress. Let's back up for a moment and follow this stranger than fiction crazy chain of intrigue for a minute because it explains how this chateau developed. About a decade after it was built, in 1535, the chateau was seized by King Francis I of France for unpaid debts to the crown. And after Francis's death in 1547, his son, King Henry II, offered the chateau as a gift not to his wife, Catherine de' Medici, but to his mistress, Diane de Poitiers, who became fervently attached to the chateau along the river. Henry also gave his girlfriend, Diane, much more political power while generally ignoring his young wife, Catherine, for the next 10 years. Diane extended the chateau across the river and oversaw the planting of extensive flower and vegetable gardens along with a variety of fruit trees. Living large at Chenonceau for the next decade, King Henry II died in 1559 and his strong-willed widow, Catherine de Medici, took her revenge and forced Diane out of the chateau, making Chenonceau her own favorite residence. As ruler of France, Catherine spent a fortune on the chateau, eager to outdo the work of her rival, Diane. Catherine expanded the Grand Gallery crossing the river, added many more rooms and a new series of gardens, and she staged spectacular nighttime parties, including fireworks. Catherine's son-in-law then became King Henry IV and gave Chenonceau to his mistress. By 1650, King Louis XIV was the last royal to visit, bringing to an end the crown possession. In 1720, the chateau was purchased by the Duke of Bourbon, who eventually sold off all of the castle's contents, with many of the fine statues ending up at Versailles. In the 1700s, it became a gathering place for leaders of the Enlightenment, such as Voltaire, Montesquieu, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And then during the French Revolution, it was spared from destruction because it was the only bridge across the river for many miles. The chateau was sold several more times and finally purchased in 1913 by the Meunier family, which still owns it today and welcomes visitors every day of the year. Our series about the Chateau of the Loire is also bringing you to Amboise, Chambord, Cheverny, Azé, and Blois and a few other places with our home base in the city of Tours. Have a look at our YouTube channel and our website for more movies about this beautiful region and many videos about the rest of France.